guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we are going to be checking out the Masters of the Universe Skeletor as he appeared in the 1987 motion picture, part of the Masterverse series. That's right, another deluxe figure and another one based on that original film. Um, this one I am very excited for. I have always adored Frank Langella's portrayal of Skeletor. Uh, and for the longest time, these were like dream figures of mine. Now we did get these in the Masters of the Universe Classics line from Super 7 there at the tail end of that line. But now we've gotten He-Man and Skeletor here in Masterverse as well. Pretty cool stuff and uh, a little bit more accessible than those other ones were. So we're gonna go ahead and take a good look at this guy. We'll compare him to that other version, but let's start by looking at the box. Just like the He-Man, he is in the deluxe style packaging. So it is this massive box, though it is kind of funny looking at it. I said the same thing with He-Man. There's really not like a ton of extra accessories in there and the way they've got it all spaced out, it just looks so empty in there. I assume these had to fall into the deluxe realm probably because they were a little bit more expensive due to licensing. I don't know that for sure. Um, nonetheless, doesn't feel super deluxe, um, but still really cool because we get this amazing artwork on the packaging. So beautiful artwork on the spine of Skeletor holding the cosmic key. And then again on the backside with Skeletor, which will line up with the He-Man box if you have it to make one giant scene of Skeletor and He-Man charging into battle. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Eamon O'Donohue who did the artwork for this box. I know he's a big fan of the 87 movie, so this was sort of like a dream project for him. So congrats Eamon, that's really cool. And the artwork is fantastic on this box. But let's go ahead and get this opened up. That way we can get a closer look at the action figure itself. We'll compare it to the other version that was released and see what it's all about. All right, we've got our movie Skeletor outside of the packaging. Bringing in the tape measure here, you can see that the hood pokes just a little bit above seven inches tall, so fits in with the rest of the figures from your Masterverse lineup. Uh, this figure looks really good. I like this quite a bit. There's a lot of cool little details and intricacies going on here. And uh, in a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in the Masters of the Universe Classics one for a full on comparison time, because I think that's important with a figure like this since we've got one that is very similar that was already released a few years back. But looking at these details here, um, one of the things that really stands out on this one is the color of the armor. Um, it sort of has this pearlized like purple coloration to it. Uh, mixed in with the details on the black of his outfit, uh, which does stand out a little bit more vibrant on this particular version. Um, it's a color that you don't really notice, especially when you're watching the film, but I'm willing to bet the details there in the costume. Sometimes that happens uh, on film. It doesn't quite stand out as much as it's actually there and present. And if they're basing this strictly off the costume or the artwork for the costume, I'm willing to bet that's where these colors came from here. It does look very, very nice though. And I love the details. Uh, you know, the straps have the nice rivets all the way down. Also, look at all the rivets on the skirt piece that he's wearing there. You could see all the little skulls and the little bugs, all these great little details that are worked into that piece down here. Really, really cool stuff. Now, uh, the cape on his back is cloth on this figure. It is sort of that thinner material that we've seen on a lot of the Masterverse figures. It's cut straight, it hangs pretty straight. It does curl a little bit, which actually does look really nice the way it kind of folds back. I do wanna point out that I've got a hole in the middle of mine, which I think is from one of the ties in the package. And that is really, really unfortunate. I do not like that at all. Thankfully, the way it curls, it does sort of hide it, but every now and then, it does stand out to me and man I just don't like that toy companies keep putting holes in the capes lately I don't I, I don't know why we're doing that <laughs> um like nice details down on the boots you can see it's sort of like this gun metal silver again the same skulls at the top there uh really really nice stuff um and then I do want to point out too like I like how the fingertips on this one do sort of have the silver paint on there because that was always very noticeable to be in the movie that he had like those metal tips on his gloves. And then you can see he's got all sorts of little buttons and stuff on his cuffs here. And then that brings us up to the hood at the top. Uh, I do think this looks very nice. It looks like it's flowing naturally, even though this is molded in plastic. You can see it kind of uh, is elongated in the back. It is almost more of like a light brown color rather than black, which stands out to the rest of the outfit, which does appear to be black. 
and the face sculpt is really good on this. Now I will say the details on this might be a little soft and probably could use a little bit more of a wash or a detail of some sort on there to bring out all of the sculpted details. There is a slight wash on there. Um, but otherwise, I think it does a really good job of capturing the makeup that Frank Langella was wearing in the film. In fact, dare I say, this looks a little bit more like Langella's Skeletor than the classics version of the figure did. So with that said, I think it's comparison time. So this is the Masters of the Universe Classics version of Movie Skeletor that was put out by Super 7 a few years ago, standing next to our Mattel Masterverse version of the character. And if we're looking at the outfits here side by side, I think both of them do a pretty great job of capturing the look of this. You can see the differences. For instance, those purples really stand out on the Mattel version compared to the more like bronze dry brushing that we have on the Super 7 version here. Um, the belt sits a little bit lower while we sit a little bit higher on the Mattel one there. But all of those details in like the skirt part and the uh, straps that are hanging down, the shoulder pads, like they are all very, very similar. Probably a little bit more detailed with a little bit better paint deco on the Super 7 version, uh, but really it's not all that different. Uh, the Super 7 one also opted for a molded cape instead of the cloth cape on the back there. So you can see the differences with that. One thing that the Super 7 one didn't have are those little metal painted tips on the fingers. So that again, that really stood out to me on this new Masterverse version here. And then I wanna talk about those faces because while I did really like the face on that Super 7 release, something about that Masterverse one really does evoke the way he looked in the movie just a little bit more. So I do think I prefer the new face sculpt over what we got previously. But regardless, I think both of these do a pretty good job of capturing the Langella version of Skeletor just in slightly different ways. They both do a pretty great job. So let's go ahead and move that Super 7 one out of the way for a minute. We'll go ahead and talk about the articulation here real quick. So that head is going to be hindered. You're not going to get a lot of movement out of it. And that's because of this longer, stiffer part of the hood that is hanging down in the back, as well as this cape there. So you can see that even when I try to turn it, it usually is just going to pop that head right off the ball joint. Now, all of these are removable pieces. So if you do want to remove that and the cloth cape underneath, they're just sitting over that ball joint there. But otherwise, you're not going to get a ton of motion out of the head. The shoulders can come upwards, but again, uh, we are definitely getting hindered by these giant shoulder pads here hitting uh, the cape up there. So it, that is also going to mess with the range of motion there. You do have swivels at the bicep. You have double joints at the elbow, swivel at the wrist and a hinge at the wrist. You can roll the torso around in the midsection as well as turn the waist. The uh, legs can go outwards of the thighs. I got those ball leg joints and you can see that that skirt piece does allow for the movement still. You can also move the legs forwards and backwards, swivel at the thigh cut there. You have double joints in the knees that are very, very tight on this guy. Uh, swivels at the boot and then the ankles can go forwards, backwards, as well as rock side to side. So you do have a few more points of articulation on this figure, but a lot of it is still hindered specifically up in the upper body here. Um, but you know, you're probably not going to get a lot of dynamic posing out of Frank Langella Skeletor anyway, so I suppose it's probably fine, um, though that might hinder some of your display options just a little bit. Now he does come with a few interchangeable hands. Um, right now I've got both of the gripping hands on, but if you want, you also have a closed fist for the right and you've got one of those wide open hands for the left. Now, I have criticized a lot of the Masterverse wide open hands because they always seem a little too flat and I will say the same for this one. However, there is a nice use for this one because that's gonna go very well with the Cosmic Key, which I'm so happy that this comes with. It's so crucial to the plot of this movie and this character. And uh, that flat hand is perfect for getting that like cradling the cosmic key that we see him doing in the film quite a bit. 
So let's look at that cosmic key for a little bit. We are going to be doing some comparisons with the accessories as well, because I feel that's very important. The cosmic key does look pretty nice. It's got a gold coloration on the bottom. You can see the big red button. The strap here is just molded. It doesn't really move or anything. And then the upper portion is all silver and it's got that purple on there. All the forks are just molded in there so they're not like separate pieces and they're not sticking off. So I do wanna bring in the other version of the Cosmic Key that we got from the Super 7 figure, which I do think looks a little bit better, especially with all the forks at the top being individually molded there. Um, the Paint Deco just looks a little bit better as well. Still, I like the new Cosmic Key. I do just prefer the other version that we already got. So in addition to the Cosmic Key, this version of Skeletor also comes with his, uh, I guess it's his half of the power sword, because it is very similar to He-Man's. It just has a different design on here, sort of like the skull and bat look, but it's really nice looking. And honestly, it's not too different from the Super 7 version, other than the Super 7 one had a silver painted blade, while this one is just molded in a flat gray plastic. So just a little bit more paint deco on the previous release. You can see um, also the designs are quite a bit different, like they're similar, at the hilt, but they're a little bit different, as well as the shape of the handles there. It's much wider on the new one. And then, of course, we also have the movie version of the Havoc Staff, which is very cool as well. Uh, it's silver at the top, does have a little bit of like a grayish color to it, which looks really nice. Got that ram skull up there. This is quite a bit different looking from the Super 7 version, which was gold and just feels a little bit more elaborate. The sculpt is bigger. Um, so they're similar in design, but they are a a bit different as far as the overall sculpt goes and definitely as far as the paint deco goes. Now, all of these accessories do work really well in the hands of this new Skeletor. He gets a good grasp on all of them. And seriously, getting him posed there uh, with that Havoc Staff in his hand, holding on to the Cosmic Key, it is pretty sweet. And of course, we do need to show these guys side by side with all of their weapons and accessories as well, just so you can see what they look like. And there you go, my friends. That is a detailed look and comparison of the new Masterverse Skeletor as he appeared in the 1987 motion picture. Uh, this figure is pretty great. I like it quite a bit. And of course, you could really compare to what came before it. You can get nitpicky with some of the designs. But on its own, it's a really nice figure. I think it does a really good job of capturing the look of this character as he appeared in the movie. And since Langella's face is hidden by all that makeup, we don't have to worry about a, a terrible likeness on this figure. This one actually has a pretty great likeness to what we see on screen. And I am very happy about that. This is so much better than the He-Man figure that we got. I do hope that this means that there's a possibility of more figures from this movie uh, because while getting He-Man and Skeletor again is great, especially for anybody who missed out on the Super 7 versions, we still have so many characters from that movie who deserve action figures like Tila and Man at Arms and Evil Lynn and Beast Man. Come on, Mattel. I hope you're listening. We need those. We really do. <laughs> so Skeletor is hitting store shelves right now. He's been found at places like Target. I got mine through BigBadToyStore.com. So happy hunting, my friends. And until next time.